Hi there and welcome to this tutorial for Fastlane, a digital audio school done in Montpellier, France, an Ableton certified training center. In this series of tutorials, we're learning how to use the Max for Live devices. You may know these tools got revamped with the release of Live 10. We think they may well change your workflow forever. So let's start with the LFO. So before I actually show you how to use the Max for Live LFO, let's talk about LFOs all together. These low frequency oscillators enable us to modulate, to move parameters within our synthesizers. Oscillators produce sound. They are the source of the sounds in most synthesizers. In hardware synths, it's the movement in the tension, in the electric tension that produces the sound. However, in the soft synths, it's an algorithm that reproduces what happened in the real life. So us human beings can only hear vibrations, oscillations that are above 20 cycles per second. Well, the LFOs do not go at that rate. They go below that, usually around maximum 17 cycles, 17 periods per second. So that's why we can't hear them. However, we can use this movement to modulate, to make other parameters move. So... Within analog, for example, we have two LFOs here that can be sent, can be feed in various places. If I select the oscillator here on the left-hand side, I can modulate here the pitch. And if I have a square, I can actually modulate the pulse width. The filter can also be modulated. The frequency here, the resonance there the amplifier with the level, the actual volume, and here the pan. So it's only six destinations for this LFO. There are many more parameters within analog, so we can't actually address or make the other parameters move. And this is where the Max for Live LFO comes really handy. I'm going to go and get it here. So you select the Max for Live tab here, and you can actually type LFO, and you'll find it here in the Max for Live audio effects and in the media effects as well. So I actually use the audio one since it's a little more versatile. It can be placed on all locations in live. Audio tracks, MIDI tracks, return tracks, master tracks. The MIDI one can only be uh, placed on MIDI tracks, so it's a little bit uh, restrictive. So let's go and fetch the LFO audio. This is the old one on Live 9, it's blue. Uh, the new one here is yellow. It's not just the color that has changed, as you'll see in a minute. So this LFO can be assigned anywhere within Live. Using this map button here, I can, for example, modulate a volume fader, something that was absolutely impossible before. So something that's also rather convenient with this LFO is that you can actually visualize the movement. This is not the case with the classic LFOs, for instance, if I assign the level modulation in the synths, you see, we, we can't see the level moving. We can hear it move, but we, we won't be able to actually see it, visualize it. So that's another good point about this uh, um, Max for Live LFO. So we can see here the curve, the actual movement that's being applied to the uh, fader, we can change the shape of that movement using this menu here. We have the sawtooth, we have the ramp. Very good for uh, uh, rhythm to, to actually uh, create a, a really rhythmic movement. We have the triangle that actually sounds a little bit like a sine movement. We have a square which is used a bit like a switch with two positions only. You can see the fader here having only two positions. We can use the, the random and the bean, which are, well, as the name implies, slightly random. We can change the rate of the movement using the rate button. You can see the fader moving faster and slower as I move this button. This movement can be synchronized to live's tempo using the note icon here. We can change the range of the movement using the depth you can see i can now narrow the movement or widen the movement that way i can change i can offset the central point of the oscillation using the offset button you can see here i can move it slightly more to the bottom of the fader or slightly to the top of the fader here i can change the starting point of the movement using the phase here and I can stop the movement using the hold button and at any stage I can reset the starting point using the R retrigger button here. I can make it slightly more jittery 
and I can also smooth the jitter again here. Okay, now on the top of the interface here, I've got a percentage, a relative value. So this will set the range of this assignment I've done, the track volume assignment. And this is a relative value of the depth. So you can say the depth will set the minimum and the maximum, and this will set the movement within the range set by the depth. What's new in the Live 10 LFO is this little icon here, and this reveals seven extra assignments. I can therefore map the same LFO to seven different destinations within live. So at the moment I've set the two ranges identical and you can see the two faders are moving in the same manner. But I can actually now set independently the movement of each of my assignments. Yeah, that's, that's, that's rather convenient, yeah? So something that's really useful, I'm going to show you some like real life now assignment. If I go to analog here and I select the oscillator, down on the bottom right hand side of the display I can find a sub sync button. The sync option is great. Let, 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 let's hear it. So you could clearly hear a, a, a movement in the timbre of the sound. And this is due to uh, a kind of re-triggering of the waveform uh, using another waveform. It's slightly complex, but the sound is really pleasant. Slightly aggressive, really uh, lively. I love that that type of movement. Well, this you see is not a possible destination when we use the built-in LFOs in analog. So let's now map it to our LFO Max for Live LFO, and you can see it now. It's moving. I can set the range. Obviously, let's hear it. Let's make it a little slower. No, faster. <laughs> there, I meant slower. Lovely, isn't it? And since I can now assign many more uh, uh, parameters, I'm going to go and set and choose the second sync button for my second oscillator here. So yeah, you can hear this lovely interaction between the two oscillators, they're rubbing against each other, it's absolutely gorgeous. So that's one of the many, many, many possibilities that are open to us now using the Max for Live LFO. I find a lot of our students don't use these Max for Live effects enough. Well, there's no excuse now since Max for Live is integrated within Live, uh, you won't have to install it and these objects will be in your library as soon as you've uh, install the Max for Live Essential Pack that you can download from your Ableton account. See you soon. Uh, I think we'll, we'll make more of these uh, tutorials on the Max for Live uh, objects now.